you and listen what you have done uh with this announcement is sending shockwaves across the country uh, thank you like, like you many of us african-american males who grew up in communities uh with trauma uh, we, re we realized the disproportionality in terms of how aggressive law enforcement was towards us and many friends we lost along the way because where we were able to avoid all the traps. Uh, I see far too many individuals falling in the, in the trap. So thank you for what you have done. But, but honestly, it, it, thank you for what we got done together. Because I want to be clear that none of this would have happened had it not been for folks like you, the NAACP, organizers, organizations, impacted citizens, mm -hmm. impacted citizens, who came up and were just continuing to beat the yeah. drum and to say this has got to happen and you know and I and I tell you, uh, you know, Mr. President, it, it's 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 one of these things where a little over a year ago our state voted that we would have a that we were going to create a recreational cannabis market in the state of Maryland, uh, and the thing that we knew was this was that you now as we've done this rollout and we spent the past year doing this recreational cannabis market. We're also very clear, you cannot celebrate the benefits of legalization if you do not wrestle with the consequences of criminalization. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. And this is just basic fairness of what we're talking about. Though, to your point, we have had communities that have just been so deeply impacted by this issue. And you look into how in the state of Maryland alone, you know, you know African Americans were three times more likely to be arrested for cannabis in this, you know, during, during this time period. During the time period, during the whole entire war on drugs, over half of the arrests that we had during that time period was for cannabis, wow. for something that's now legal inside wow. of our state. So as we are now having you know, a multi-billion dollar industry that is getting rolled out, we also knew that this had to be an opportunity that you had to right a lot of wrongs. Yeah. And that's where with this, with this pardon, with the, you know, the largest mass pardon, in the history of the United States for cannabis convictions, which again, we worked on together to make happen. This was a way of being able to say that we are able to wrestle with our history to create a better future and one that we think could, uh, could, could honor all of us. You know, I, I can only imagine all of the individuals who have benefited now from this decision that can be gainfully employed. They are not walking around with a scarlet letter. They can actually be contributing members of society. I grew up in the inner city of Detroit. And one thing I know where there is no economy, one will be created. And what you have right. just done here is create opportunity, not because it was a legal thing for you. Well, it was the legal thing for you to do. You did it because it was the moral thing to do. Right. The billion dollars that will be transacted as a result of this industry is something that African Americans realized they had no option. So they participated in an economy that was not above board, so to speak, legally, right. when in fact, what we now recognize, it was a trap yes. that created uh, barriers for some of the most intelligent, gifted individuals this society has ever produced. Right. And now they can really share their gifts, uh, to not only to, for their families, not only for their neighborhoods and African community, but for democracy and, uh, right here in this country, but globally. That's right. And you and you think about what this how what this has meant. It means things to folks like, you know, a brother named Shiloh, who was there when I when I signed a pardon, who received one of you know, one of my pardons. You know, a brother who had the only thing on his record was a misdemeanor cannabis conviction. And that has kept him from getting gainful employment for all these years. You know, somebody who on his second day of the job got fired on his second day of the job because he couldn't pass a background check and a yeah. background check because of a misdemeanor cannabis conviction. These, this is impacting folks who are looking to get barber's licenses. This is impacting folks who are looking to get government contracts. This is impacting folks who are looking to get student loans and home loans. I mean, like the, 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 the fact that we have used this as a society, use cannabis as this cudgel for so long, mm -hmm. and then we're willing to say, but we're gonna open up a market and not wrestle with the fact that so many people and families have been so directly impacted on this, it just did not make sense. And so you're absolutely right. The ability now to bring people back into an economy in a way that we need them back into an economy. 
in a way of helping people to reintegrate with families, in a way that we want them to be able to reintegrate with families, and in a way that we want them to be able to participate in a new growing market of something that, you know, Maryland, I'm proud of in the past year, Maryland has rolled out, uh, you know, the, the, the most equitable uh, and the most transparent cannabis rollout in, in the United States. We're very proud of that. 174 new social equity licenses have been given wow. in the state of Maryland for people to be able to join into the cannabis market. That's a, that's a good thing. However, we still need to get rid of these artificial barriers yeah. that continue to stand in the way for people to be able to participate in our larger economic growth that we're seeing here in the state. I mean, like you, we, we know and knew people who got trapped in 1994 at the age of 20. Correct. And here we are 30 years later and you finally have given them an opportunity. But 30 years of lost opportunity, 30 years of, of being undervalued as a human being to provide for your family, 30 years of walking in the shadows, and you, although you have full citizenship, you don't, you're not entitled to all of the benefits, the privileges, and the opportunities that this country have to offer. That's right. You know, when I think about the workforce of the future, uh, we got to wrestle with the fact that we're running out of people and we need more people who can participate in the workforce of the future because in order for us to remain a leading nation economically in order for us to truly leverage this notion of being a leading democracy we have to ensure that our citizens are empowered and they embrace all what this country have to offer and there are no barriers there That's Right. And I tell you, and I, 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 I cannot stress enough how important it is to have the kind of partnership that you all have provided to us throughout this entire throughout this entire process. You made this part in better. You have made sure that we can push it out to people so they know. So people know when people say, well, what if I got a pardon, what do I have to do? The answer is nothing. Yeah. You've been pardoned. Yeah. But the only thing you do now is check your records go to any public kiosk at any at any courthouse all throughout the state of maryland and you'll see that it now just simply has pardoned by the governor there's nothing left for you to do but and people have to know that people have to know what are the next steps and what are the things we have to do and you all have been invaluable in that not just in sharing the message but also helping to lead on the fight because I'm just a big believer in this idea that, and this is, this is where it goes back to the idea that elections do have consequences. Oh, yeah. Elections have consequences. Yeah. Who sits in these seats, it matters. What issues and agenda items they make their priority, this stuff matters. And so we have to be not just involved in, 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 in the work of taking these elections seriously. And when I you know, again, I cannot, I cannot deal with the folks who are just like, I'm just going to sit out. November. Yeah. Please do not. Please do not be foolish. Yeah. Please I, I, do not. Please do not underestimate what is at stake, what is at line, and what is on the line, and why we have to be involved and engaged in every step of this work. You know, I was talking to a group of young men. Uh, a few of them had, were formerly incarcerated, and they began to talk about, you know, through these two narratives. One, they're going to vote for a third-party candidate. I said, stop. In a two party system, there isn't a third choice that, that you're throwing away your vote. And if you don't vote, you're playing checkers in the game is chess. Yes. Election absolutely matters. And one of the young men lived in a house where his mother was the first appointment in, in a particular uh, 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 position. And I say, you live in a house where you see the impact. You grew up in a house where you should be able to feel the impact. And although you're 20 years old, you need to really think about what you're saying here. That one, it has made a difference. It has made a difference in your household. But two, if you don't participate, the real difference it will make, it will be a negative consequence yes. towards you. So yes. we have to ensure that we participate in every election. Most elections, it really isn't about candidate A versus candidate B. It's whether or not we can add our voice to ensure that we get a functioning democracy that's inclusive of us, 
But then when we have those opportunities to elect a candidate like you with enough courage who understand not only of the experiences of an African-American man in this society, but also understand the power of policy, that it goes beyond just speech and charisma, it is actually looking at what can I do to change the paradigm? How do I move away from the status quo? And how can I have an elastic impact? That's called courage, and thank you for your courage. God bless you, Mr. President, thank you. And I, and I, and I tell you, uh, you know, the, the uniqueness that we do see in these moments in these roles, is we have so many levers to yeah. be able to move this arc of our of our history, right? You know, in, in some cases, whether it is the power of the executive order, and you know, there's there's only dozens of people in this country that have the power to pardon, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, and I am one of them, right. and and we we're able to use that to make the largest mass pardon uh, in the history of our country for for cannabis conviction. But there are so many levers that we have as a society to be able to make sure that our voices are heard, that our, that our intent is being done, that people are using the budgets to be able to properly represent our interests, to make yeah. sure that we're using the legislative branch to be able to pass laws that can actually make a fundamental difference in the way that we are, the way that things are viewed, that we can have people in place that can appoint judges that are going to make judicial decisions that are actually being used to actually expand our freedoms and our rights and not subtract from our freedoms and from our rights. Like this is such an important moment. And 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 the 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 cur and I appreciate what you said about the courage that, that we have shown, the courage that you all, that you continue to show in this work, on this and so many issues, it is invaluable. And it's so necessary right now. And the thing that I want for everybody to remember is for each and every person who's watching, you know. It's time for all of us to show a measure of courage. Yeah. It's time for all of us to show a measure of spine and backbone. It's time for all of us to show a measurement of, 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 of fortitude and vision about what type of society are we hoping for and what are we willing to do? Like, I'm telling you, I want everybody between now and November and beyond, I want all of us to be exhausted. Yes. Absolutely ex exhausted. I want us to be able to look back and say, I could not have done anything more. I did mm -hmm. everything thing in my power to be able to push forward the kind of ideas and policies that we know that those that came before us that they hope for and those that come after us that they deserve that we wasted no time that's what we have to do in this moment you know we win when we present messages and realities of hope and what you've done here is created the reality of hope we lose when we allow a fear message to supersede our hope message and what you are demonstrating there is a hope action. It goes beyond the words, it goes to the action. 175,000 individuals who have been free to fully engage and participate in our society. That's a hope action. And I hope not only the other governors across the country understand the courage it took and their ability to do the same, I want all of those young men and young ladies and other individuals in our communities to really embrace this action of hope. This is a power of our collective vote. I'll say that in a democracy, one's vote is their currency. Mm. And if those of us, all of those of us who are like-minded deposit our currency together, we get the government, we get the representation, we get the equity that not only that we deserve, we get what we demand. And in this moment of hope actions, we must demand more and that can only happen if we deposit our currency together. Yes, yes. Well, I tell you, I tell you, Mr. President, I, uh, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you, how much I admire you and how much I admire your leadership. And, and while we're proud of what Maryland was able to accomplish, we could not have gotten done without you. We could not have okay. gotten done without your leadership without your push, without your vision, without, uh, without, without your pressure for us to go bigger and go more expansive and do something that is going to touch as many people as humanly possible. You know, when we say in Maryland, when we say we leave no one behind, we mean that. That is not a slogan, it's a governance philosophy. And I'm grateful for the work that you and so many other groups were able to do to help us to actually do just that and so 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 very public i just want to say how much i appreciate you how much i admire you and, and for everybody i just want to say listen maryland we're just getting started 
This is this is going this is Maryland's decade, and I'm grateful that Maryland's really going to help to lead the charge on uh, on not just uh, righting a lot of wrongs, but making sure that we can show people this is what inclusive growth actually looks like, and this is hey. why it matters, and this is what we're going to fight for. Keep setting the example because it is about the collective, all of us, to make this happen. I'm mm -hmm. proud to stand on this platform we call NAACP. And WACP is many individuals, including you, and all the citizens of this country who want to make democracy work for all and ensure equal protection under the law. You're setting an example. Thank you. Continue to lead. God bless you, good brother. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody.